Good afternoon, everyone. We are going to do today our third lesson of the quarter. Today, we're going to solve systems quadratic linear graphically. Okay, this is a continuation of the unit before. We solved systems before, you know, linear and quadratic using elimination and substitution. Remember when we put them equal to zero? Uh, and uh, also we did when we substitute and, uh, you know, and we do elimination when we have to eliminate one of the variables. So those two methods were solving algebraically. Now we're going to solve systems graphically. That means that we have to graph a parabola and we have to graph a line. But as always, in the very beginning of the lesson, I always uh, give you a warm up. So this time, what I was going, to, what I was going to ask you on the warm up is to solve this problem. Okay, the problem that is uh, presented in the do now is um, about um, you know a baseball player. In this case, a rod is throwing a ball from the back of the midfield to the home plate. Okay, so when he throws the ball, the ball uh, create a path okay a path that represented by this quadratic equation that is here okay remember that's a that's b and that's c now y is the height that the ball is going to reach the maximum height and x is the times in seconds x will be the time where the ball will reach the highest point okay so that, that be, that's going to be a maximum remember when we do real world problems we're actually working with positive numbers only remember we can have negative time we can have negative height we can have negative measures so every time we do a real world problem supposed to be positive numbers only so we're going to see this you know like down the road but this is just like a little warm-up and introduction you know for what's coming next so the question here says, what is the maximum height? The height means the value of y, okay? So, what that means is that we have to find the vertex. Because in the vertex, we will find the maximum point. That's what the vertex is. The vertex is either maximum or minimum, all right? So, in this case, it's going to be a maximum. And... Uh, so therefore, we have two options, okay? The first option that I always recommend is to use the axis of symmetry. And asking you here, I'm giving you here a hint, find the axis of symmetry first, then substitute into the original equation to find the value of y. You can also do this in the calculator, but I want you to practice how to find the axis of symmetry. Remember, the axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. So we're gonna get that in those, values from the equation so minus from the formula the value of b here is positive 48 so i have to i don't have to put in parentheses over 2 times the value of a which is negative 16 okay when i do that then i'm just going to solve so x equals on the top i'm going to have negative 48 and on the bottom i'm going to have negative 32 and when i divide this i get positive 1.5 remember this is the axis of symmetry, but in this problem, the axis of symmetry represents the time where the ball reaches its maximum point. So now, because we're not looking for the time, we're looking for the height of the ball, right? We're looking for the value of y. So what we have to do is either two options. The easy option will be to put this in the calculator and to find the value of y when x is 1.5, just as we did before on graphing parabolas. But if you're gonna do it algebraically, what you have to do is substitute 1.5 into the original equation, which is y equals negative 16 parentheses 1.5 squared. Don't forget the square. Some of you forgot the square on the homework. Plus 48 parentheses 1.5 plus 6. All right. So. I'm substituting the x values into the equation to find the value of y, which is going to be my height. And when I put that in the calculator, just the way it is, with parentheses and everything, my answer is 42. So that means, guys, that the ball reaches its maximum at 42 feet. Okay? What is the maximum height? So the answer here will be 42 feet. Okay? 
Now, just for you to know, if they were to ask you at what time the ball reaches its maximum point, that would be 1.5 seconds on one and a half seconds. Now, if I put this together, 1.5, chi 42, that would be my vertex. But remember, this is a word problem, so I don't have to write the vertex. I just have to answer the question. But again, guys, this is just a warm up. We're gonna see this down the road. Now we're gonna go into what the topic is today, which is graphing systems, quadratics, and linear. What does that mean? What does that mean is that we have to graph in the plane a parabola and a line, okay, represented by these two equations, okay? Graph and solve the following system of equation. Now remember guys, a system, we did this, okay, algebraically, but we're gonna do it now graphically. So if I look at my two equations here, I know this is my line because it just doesn't have the square, only have the linear uh, um, exponent of ones. And this one will be my parabola. Now, remember, the parabola here is gonna be a happy face, okay? Because this value is positive. So in this case, that will be a minimum. We don't need that. I'm just explaining to you so you can become familiar with the vocabulary, right? My parabola is gonna be happy face and my line, we all know how to graph a line. So for the line, I don't need a table. So we know on the line, this is my slope and this is my y-intercept, right? So what you have to do is, Start with the y-intercept, which is my beginning point. Then my slope, because it's positive, it's gonna be five up, one over, five up, one over. I draw another darker x um, um, axis because if I use this one, you will have enough time, uh, room to graph the parabola. Because sometimes, you know, you need like to go like one or two lines outside the uh, plane, but I made it easy for you. So I, I created that line, so we're gonna start from here. That's my x-axis, right? So if I start at three, so from the origin, one, two, three, that will be my beginning, my beginning point. Then I go five up, one over. Every time we have a whole number, remember that goes over one. So one, two, three, four, five, one over. One, two, three, four, five, one over. And we can go backwards. One, two, three, four, five, one over. You know, one, two, three, four, five, one over. And I think I have enough points to draw my line. So remember also, the line is gonna be positive because when this slope is positive, the line should go in that direction and that's how it looks at, like here, okay? So it's very nice to keep those on mind, all right? So you don't get um, confused. So when I draw my line, you also do not have to label them because there is a big difference between a line and a parabola, right? So I did my line. So now let's do the parabola. My recommendations, guys, is always for you, okay, to use the axis of symmetry because sometimes the vertex is not a whole number, remember? So when you have a decimal, like one of the hormones that I assigned for last week, the uh, vertex, the axis of symmetry, the axis of symmetry was a decimal, therefore the vertex is gonna be formed by a decimal order pair. So to find my axis of symmetry, remember the formula, right? X equals two B over, I'm sorry, is minus B over two A. So X equals minus from the formula, because now my, I'm using my parabola, forget about the line. Now the B value here is four and it's positive. I don't have to put in parentheses times two from the formula and the value of A is one. So we, everybody should be at least um, comfortable using this because we have used that a lot, the axis of symmetry, and I'm stressed that. Remember, why is that easy? Because I will put the axis of symmetry on the center of the X column, all right? And I will pick three numbers smaller than negative two, which is gonna be negative three, negative four, negative five, and three numbers larger than negative two, which is negative one, zero, and one. Now, remember, when I find the value of y, that's gonna be my vertex. So how am I gonna do that? Now I'm going to go to my calculator and I'm gonna put my parabola, okay? So remember what I did before, guy, and it helps, all right? Just 
uh, clear the memory so you can have a better um, starting point when you graph. To clear the memory, you do second plus seven, one, two. I already did it, so mine was already clean, but I'll do it with you, all right? Second, the blue button, plus the plus button, seven, one, two. And that will clear my memory, and my calculator is free to go. So let me just graph now the parabola. So we go to y equals, right? And we're gonna use x squared, okay? Plus four x, everybody know how to enter them in the calculator. Plus one, okay? So now look. I need to find the values of y when x is negative five up to x is positive one. So if I go to the graph and I go to second graph, right, to find the table, because I clear the memory, my x start at zero. But remember, I don't need this window. I need my window supposed to be in a negative five and ends at positive one. So that means I have to go up one uh, until I get to negative five. You go slowly, okay, and there it is. Okay, from negative one, five to positive one. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna copy all these numbers next to each value of x, okay? So I'm gonna remove my calculator, right? And I'm gonna copy those numbers. So six up, six down, one up, one down, negative two here, negative two here, and negative three, and I have my vertex, okay? So now I can graph my parabola. So you can start from the vertex or you can start from the first point, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna start from the first point right here. So that means when x is negative five, y is six. So five to the left and six up from the origin, right? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's my first point. Then four to the left, one up. One, two, three, four, one up. Three to the left, two down. One, two, three, one, two down. Two to the left, three down. One, two, one, two, three. All right? Then when I got to my vertex, look, when you get to the vertex, you know that's negative two, positive three. Just keep open up and just match the other point is like a point, or it's like a reflection because that's going to be my light reflection. Remember, this is the axis of symmetry, okay, where x is negative two. So that means that if this is my axis of symmetry, all right, what's going to happen after that? After the vertex, I'm going to create an image of the other points of this side of the equation. So what I will do from my vertex, I will open up one and I'm going to match up that point right there. I'm gonna keep open it up, look to the right, and I'm gonna match the other point, which is this one. And I open myself up and I match the other point that is there. So look, there's a little problem here, because when I do the parabola, right, I know they're gonna cross right here, okay? So you have one solution right here. That's when the parabola and the line crosses. But there's another point, guys, and that point is supposed to be a little farther up. So how am I gonna know which point is that? Because remember, so remember, we open ourselves up in the parabola. So I got here until when it was um, two, all right? So one, zero. So what I'm going to do is, so my value of x here is one, and the value of y is six, right? That's the point right here. But I need to go to one more point so to see what's the value of y and to see if they touch. So I'm gonna create another point here. If I go to my calculator, all right, and I'm gonna move up a little more to find the other coordinate because I need another number, and that will be 13, all right? So that means that 13 is right here, okay? So the parabola will continue and it will go through that point too. So that's what you have to do. You don't have to worry about the other side because what we need to do is we have to uh, see the points when both graphs connect or when both graphs intersect. And they intersect right here, intersect right there. Because most of the time there's always two solutions, sometimes there's one, sometimes there's no solution. But in this case, we have two solutions. So what are the solutions there? This point, which is negative one, negative two, all right? One left, two down, and this one that I just found out, which is 
2 comma 13. Now, what you have to do now is, all right, everything become easier because I use my axis of symmetry. So what I'm going to do now is this, guys. I'm going to make sure that these two points are the right ones. So I'm going to go to y equal in my calculator, right? I have my parabola there in my y1. So I'm going to go down to my y2 and I'm going to enter now the line, which is 5x plus 3, okay? So now if I go to graph, look, my graph is going to look just like the one that I already have there, right? But if you notice, you can't see this point because the window is not big enough. I'm going to show you later on how to make the window bigger, but for now, we're just going to leave like that. How are you going to make sure that these two points are the right one? By doing this, look. Now, you're going to go to second graph to the table, all right? And you're going to make sure that when x is negative 1, okay, when x is negative 1, Y has to be negative 2 for both of them. So I'm going to go to negative 1, and I can see when X is negative 1, my both Ys are negative 2. So I know that point is correct. And the other one is when X is 2, right? When X is 2, Y is 13. And if I go here, when X is 2, Y is 13. Both Ys are 13. So that's how you know that the two solutions are the right ones. Okay? So let's move on to another one. And before I move to another one, guys, it's always good for you to clean the memory, all right? So you don't have to worry about. It. So we're gonna to go to second mode that cleans the window. Then you go second plus seven, one, two. So when I do my other graph, everything starts from zero. So let's turn to problem number two. So now in the back, okay, I'm gonna do now problem number two. Again, all right? We have a parabola and we have a line. I know that's gonna be a happy face and the line is gonna be positive. It's gonna go that direction because I know that. When the slope is positive, the line goes in that direction. When it's negative, it goes down. And the parabola, when it's negative, will be self face but because it's positive, it's gonna be happy face. So let's grab the, par the line first. You always start with the line, which is easier. This is your slope that you are intercept or your beginning point. So from the origin, I go five up, one, two, three, four, five, because that's my beginning point, and I use my slope. Remember, when it's a whole number, you always add one in the denominator. So that means three up and one over from that point, from your beginning point. One, two, three, one over. One, two, three, one over. One, two, three, one over. And you can go backwards. One, two, three, one to the left. One, two, three, one to the left. One, two, three, okay? If you want to do all the points, you can do it. Otherwise, you can do a few points, and after that, you will have an idea of how the line will look like. So, I will connect my points, and I already have my line, okay? Again, you don't have to label the equation because I know there's a big difference between a line and a parabola. Now, to find, to graph the um, parabola, I'm going to find my axis of symmetry because my axis of symmetry makes my life easier. So x equals negative b over 2a so negative from the formula and because my value of b here is positive all right so i don't have to put in parentheses over 2 times 1 which is my value of my value of a so that will give me negative 2 over 2 which is equals to negative 1. so the axis of symmetry for that parabola is negative 1. Remember, in the test, if they're asking you what is the symmetry, you write x equals negative 1, not just 1, okay? So it's always x equals negative 1. That will be the answer if I ask you to write the axis of symmetry. If you write just negative 1, it's going to be wrong because I don't know if you're talking about x or if you're talking about y. So make sure you write x because it's an equation. So what do I do after this? Find three numbers smaller than negative 1, which is going to be negative 2 negative three, negative four, and three numbers bigger than negative one, which is zero, one, and two. Now, I'm gonna do one more time here. Um, I'm not gonna do it because remember, now you're gonna put this on the calculator, right? And you're gonna find the values of y. So let's do it again. So you go to y equals, and you write x squared plus two x minus one. Now be careful with the minus. 
because a lot of kids use this button as minus. And remember, this button is for the negative number only, for the leading coefficient. But other than that, you're supposed to use this one, which is the subtraction button. So what I'm doing now, I'm gonna do second graph, all right, to find my table. And of course, it's gonna start from zero because I reset it, all right? So now what I'm going to do is, I have to match this column right here with the one that I have on the table. So that means, what it means, I have to go up four until negative four, right? So I'm going up with the arrow, and that's the window that I want, okay? Now, all these values here, I'm going to go in the column of the Y, all right? So let's write that over. So that's seven up, seven down, two up, two down, negative one, negative one, and negative two. Then that's my vertex right there, okay? Now, um, let's graph any way you want. You can start from the bottom, you can start from the top, you can start from the middle, but I like to start from the top, all right? That means that I'm gonna go four left and seven up, that point. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's gonna be my first point. Then I go three left, two up. One, two, three, one, two up. Then I go two left, one down. One, two, and one down, that's my first point. They're gonna to touch right there. Then I'm gonna to get to my vertex, which is negative one, negative two. And once I get here, I only have to do the image, okay? So I'm gonna to go to the right once and match that point right there in the same line. Open to the right and match that other point right there. Open to the right and match the point right there. And if you notice here, guys, I'm not gonna be able to see where they touch, because if I connect those points to for my parabola, okay, no lines, guys, remember, no lines. If you do that, your parabola is gonna be incomplete because you're only showing one point of solution, you're supposed to show both points. So what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna go through this point right here because it's already did. So most likely that was gonna be, okay? And over here, I think it's 14 because remember, when you got to this point, you cannot go to that point because those two points are on the same line and you know that the parabola opens, it has to be that point right there when they touch. And it is, because that's when it's 14. So I'm gonna write my, my solution. The first one is negative two comma negative one, and the second one is gonna be three comma 14. Remember what I did with the other one, okay? So what I did with the other one is, what happened is, because I know it's gonna increase in to the right side, so I went up one more. And when that was three, I can clearly say that y is 14. Now, I just have to make sure, right, that both solutions are correct. So what I'm going to do again is we're gonna go back to the table, so y equals, I mean, to the equation, and we're gonna graph the line now. So the line is 3x plus five, so enter 3x plus five, right? And if you do graph, you're gonna see if it looks the same as the one that I had on my plane. And obviously you can tell that it looks exactly the same. The only thing is, I don't see this point right there because there's not enough space, okay? But the table gave it to me. Now, I'm just gonna make sure the solutions are the right one. So I'm gonna go to my table, second graph, all right? Second graph, and I'm gonna look for the values of x when it's negative two, and it has to be the same, and it's right there. When x is negative two, okay, both values of y are negative one. So that's my first solution. And when x is three, the both values of one and y are 14. So that means that my points of solution are correct. Okay? So we have done two, and I was actually, this one that I said you turn, I had it for you to do it in the classroom. You know, when if I would be in school, you would have done it so I can just see if we understand them. But we're not gonna have time for that. You can do it if you want to practice, but I'm gonna do the next two, okay? Now the next two, a little different, not different, you know how to do this, all right? But the only thing I can see here is that my line is not solved. I mean, the equation is not solved. In order for me to graph the line, the y has to be isolated. So this 2x must travel to this side. So what's gonna happen, that gonna become negative. So my actually, my equation should be y equals negative 2x plus five, okay? If you don't move it, you're gonna graph this in the wrong direction because you're gonna think that the slope is positive two while the slope is negative one. So that line is supposed to go now in that direction right there. 
and this still be my parabola and you're gonna be happy face because that's positive. Same as before, same one. So this is my slope and this is my beginning point to grab the line. Now here, I didn't get any other access because I know that you have enough space to graph this. So to graph the line, I'm gonna start at positive five on the y axis, one, two, three, four, five. Now, because this is negative, okay, I have to go down two and over one. Remember, down two, over one, down two, always to the right, guys. It doesn't matter if it's negative or positive, it's always to the right, unless, if you go backwards, like let's say if I'm gonna go backwards here, now I'm gonna go to the left because I'm, guy, I'm going, like I say, in reverse. Otherwise, okay, you can just continue with that. So let me, let me draw my line. And again, you don't have to label it, but you have to do the arrows, all right? And I'm done with my line. What's next? My parabola. Same old, same old. Axis of symmetry, okay? A and B. Remember here, right? Negative from the formula, but B here is negative. That's what I have to put in parentheses because that's going to become positive. Over 2 times 1, which is the value of A. And when I solve, I get positive 6 divided by 2. So my axis of symmetry is 3, okay? So I didn't give you now the hint, but you know that has to go in the middle. So the middle of the table is here. Three. So what do I have to do now? Three numbers smaller than three to be two, one, and zero. And three number bigger than three, four, five, six. And what do I do next? I go to my table, all right, and find the values of um, y. You already know how to do that, and you're gonna find the values, so we don't have to waste any time. So this is going to be five, because I've already done it, five and five, zero, zero, Oh, zero here, negative three, negative three here, and negative four. So this is my vertex right here, okay? So let's graph that one. And when x is zero, y is five. One, two, three, four. So my first solution is right there when they touch. When it's one to the right, zero, I stay right there, okay? Two to the right, three down. Two to the right, one, two, three down. Three to the right, four down. One, two, three to the right, four down. So that's my vertex. If I know that my vertex, what do I do after that? Move to the right and match that point, and that's my second solution right there. Move to the right and match the other point, which is this one right here. Open to the right, because remember, it's open it up. You cannot have two points in the same line, guys. If you put here, when you connect these two, you will create a line, and that would not be considered a perfect parabola. So now let's just draw the parabola. Okay. And there's my solutions right there, those two. Now, I'm gonna write it over here. So one of the first solution is zero, comma five, which is this one right here. And the other one, which is this one right here, is three, uh, I mean four, negative three, okay? One, two, three, four, negative three. Now, if you wanna make sure you have the right one, so let's just put this in the calculator, okay? Cause I already have the other ones over there, guys. Let's clean that up, right? So second mode, all right, to clean the calculator, and now let's clean the memory. Second plus seven, one, two, to reset it. So let's graph it. Y equals, let's put the parabola first. So X squared minus six X, okay, the minus from the subtraction plus five. And on the second line, I'm going to put my equation when it's already solved, okay? So it's negative two, that's what I'm talking about. Because that's negative, then from this one, I have to use this button, okay? Not that one. So negative two x, all right, plus five. If I graph it, I wanna see if it look like the one I have. And I definitely can see this is the same, and I can see both solutions now, you see? In the first two, I only saw one solution, on the calculator, right? But in here, I have enough space to see both of them. So that's the two ones. So let's see if that's the right one. So when x is zero, was they're both supposed to be five. So let's go to second graph. And when x is zero, they both y's are five. And when x is four, both, both y's are negative three. So I did it correctly, all right? So let's do one more and we'll finish. 
and the homework from this class is going to be due remember guys on thursday because this lesson is going to be for wednesday and thursday so the homework is going to be for wednesday um thursday please thursday so same thing here here this is the line and because it's negative the line has to go on that direction and another happy face we don't do happy we don't do set faces today, but you know, if we set faces, we'll be uh, the other way around. I think next lesson we'll, we'll have set faces. So for this one, I don't have to solve because the wire is already isolated. So this is my, my slope and that's my wire intercept. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, one is here. Okay, so one down, one over, one down, one over, one down, one over. So this most likely is going to be like that. So. I know what the pattern it is, so I don't have to sketch every single point. I can just do a few of them and connect them, all right? So that, there is my line. Now, be careful with this one. With this one, I have to find the axis of symmetry because if I put this in the calculator, you're not going to see it because it's going to be decimal. So the axis of symmetry, negative B over 2A. So the value of A here is 1, and the value of B is 5. So minus, because B is positive, I don't have to put in parentheses, over 2 times 1. That will give me negative 5 over 2, which is equal to positive negative 2.5. So remember, this one is not going to be seen on the calculator because it's decimal. That's what I always you that. That's what I always recommend to you the axis of symmetry because there is always an exception to the rule, and you're never going to find. You know, sometimes you're, going to you're not going to find a whole number. You can find a decimal. Remember the problem you do now when the time in seconds was 1.5 because times can be you know in seconds. So that means that negative 2.5 is supposed to be right in the middle. Now, guys. If I don't see, the, if, my axis is, if my axis is symmetry is decimal, the y value has to be decimal too. But from here, you can still get whole numbers, okay? Don't get decimal. So a smaller number than 2.5 is going to be negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. And bigger than, two, bigger than negative 2.5 is going to be negative 2, negative 1, and 0. After that, you can still use whole numbers. You don't have to use decimals. Now, the, to find the axis of symmetry right i mean the vertex i have to find the value of y but look what happened when i put that in the calculator look so let's start fresh okay let's uh well i deleted but i'd rather to clean the memory all right so i, I can have a new fresh window second plus seven one two and let's put the parabola okay so the parabola is x squared plus 5x plus 6. Look, if I go to the graph, second graph, if I go start from negative 5, right? I'm going to go up to negative 5. So let's go back to negative 5, up. Sorry here. Because this is what I get, 0, right? What happened? When I get to negative 5, on the bottom, okay, I don't get to see 0. I get to see Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I get to see this positive one. Positive one only because uh, what happened is the vertex is right between the six right here. You see the six? I mean the zeros right here. And my axis of symmetry is between three, negative three, and negative two. So there's one space there that it doesn't appear. That's why you see this extra point right here because you're not seeing the axis of symmetry. So what you do is ignore the axis of symmetry for now and you're gonna find that algebraically, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put all these numbers, six, six, two, two, zero, zero, but I'm gonna leave this one empty because I don't know what the value is. So that's six here, six here, two here, two here, zero here, and zero here. So I don't know what that is. So how am I going to find that? Algebraically. Plug it in in the calculator. So we're going to get the original equation, which is this one. So y equals x squared, which now is negative 2.5 in parentheses because it's negative. Okay. Plus 5 parentheses, negative 2.5 plus 6. 
If you put that in the calculator, just the way it is with the parentheses, your answer should be negative uh, 0.25. The last one on the homework you're supposed to be handling, it was similar to that. Okay, so negative 0.25. So that will be my vertex. It's not going to be a whole number. All right. So let's graph. We can graph all these points here, but you have to be careful when you graph the vertex because it's not going to be like in the center. So negative 5, 6, 5 to the left, 6 up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So here is your first solution. Then we go negative 4, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 2 right here. Then we go negative 3, 0. Negative 3, 0 is right here. Now remember, guys, to graph this point, all right, you can graph it over here because here is negative 2. So negative 2.5 is between negative 2 and negative 3. So it's practically in the center. And now point, negative point 0.25 should be like little below the line. So the only thing you have to do, you don't have to be perfect. As long as you don't put it right there, that would be fine. So if my axis, if this is my vertex, so the other point is going to be right here. Remember, because when x is 2, right, x is 0. When x is 1, that's 2, and I think that's my other solution right here. And when it's 0, I look at the image. Now, look, what will happen if you don't put this point right here? If you do the parabola, you're going to do this, and you're going to connect these two points, you're going to do a line. And that would be incorrect, because parabolas don't have lines, okay? So you have to make sure when you have a decimal that you see a little curve, all right? Okay? You have to look like parabola. If you at some point you draw a line, it's going to be wrong. So this is very important, all right? Remember, negative 2.5 between negative 2 and negative 3. So the excess symmetry is right here between negative 2 and negative 3. And the minimum point is like little below 0. So now my solution points are this one and that one, okay? So I'm going to just write them here, which is negative 5, comma 6 and negative 1, comma 2. Now let's double check. Let's see if that's correct. So I already have my parabola on the calculator, right? So now let's just write the equation on the bottom, which is negative x. So this button right here, negative x plus 1. Let's graph it. So go to graph, and it should look like the one that I already drew. And it's right there. And I can see the two solutions right here. So now let's make sure we have the same values, okay? So we go to second graph, and when x is negative 5, I can clearly see when x is negative 5, both values of y are 6. And when x is negative 1, both values of y are 2. So that concludes the lesson, guys. Now listen, guys, I was able to do the um, worksheet on um, Google Doc. So now I don't think you have to, well, in this case you have to because you're not going to be able to graph, but you can do the graph on a separate paper, but you can do the work on the, on the same sheet because I left you a space and it's already, um, it, um, already edited, so you can actually write on it, okay? So now you don't have to make a copy. The only thing you have to do separate is the graph and send it to me and I get the table. But the answers of symmetry and the answers, you can actually, you know, like do it on the paper. Now, if you still want to do make a copy, you know, uh, you can, but it will be easier for both of us because I can actually grade it right there and answer it to you right away instead of going to my email. But if you still have a problem, you can send it to my email, okay? But for now on, I learned how to do everything in Google Doc. So for now on, you're going to be able to write on the document, okay? But like I said, when it's a graph, it's hard because you don't know how to, you know, you won't be able to access the graph. Okay, guys, thank you and have a nice evening. And remember, this homework is going to be for Thursday. So this lesson is for Wednesday and Thursday. So you have two days for the homework, okay? Thank you and have a nice day.